Good evening. This is Pamela, and you are listening to Watchmen on the Pod. I am going to continue this evening reading in the the book that we started, Billy Graham and His Friends, written by Dr. Kathy Burns. And we are going to uh, begin with Christ's Deity Attacked. All right. With such liberals and non-Christians on the Bible Translation Committee... It's no surprise to find many important doctrines such as Christ's deity attacked. For instance, Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 was changed, a virgin shall con- no, changes a virgin shall conceive to a young woman shall conceive. This is no big deal as young women conceive every day, but only one woman conceived as a virgin. There is a vital difference, a difference with eternal consequences. For if Christ is not virgin born, then he could not save us, for he too would have been born in sin, as all humanity is. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 5, 12 explains, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Galatians chapter 4, 4 through 5. Since many of the translators didn't believe in the resurrection, it's no wonder that they changed. Job chapter 19 verse 26. The King James Version states, And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. The RSV reads, And after my skin has been destroyed, then without my flesh I shall see God. What? This version, as well as most versions since this one, leaves out entire verses. For example, the entire passage from John chapter 7 verse 53 to John chapter 8 verse 11 and Mark chapter 16 verses 9 through 20 are missing, as well as Mark chapter 15 verse 28, Matthew chapter 17 verse 21, Mark chapter 9 verse 44 and 46, Matthew chapter 12 verse 47, Mark chapter 11 verse 26, Romans chapter 16 verse 24, Mark chapter 21 verse 44, and Acts chapter 8 verse 37. Many verses omit references to Christ's blood. Colossians chapter 1 verse 14 states, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. But in the RSV has, In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. John 3.16 omits the word begotten in his only begotten son. Perry F. Rockward explains, quote, In Romans chapter 3 verse 25, 1 John 2.2 2, and 1 John 4.10, the word propitiation has been changed to expitation, expitation. The word propitiation carries with it the thought that the cross work of Christ gained the pleasure of God in place of wrath for those who receive Christ as personal Savior. The word expitation carries with it the thought that Christ died as a martyr's death rather than as the sinner's redeemer. It is another direct attack on the vital ministry of Christ on Calvary's cross. In Luke chapter 2 verse 33, they changed the words, and Joseph and his mother to and his father and his mother in verse 43 they had changed and joseph and his mother to his parents in both places the greek text contains the word joseph which means joseph and is translated joseph by these same scholars in each of the 33 times it is found in the new testament except the two instances above This is another wicked attempt directed against the virgin birth of Christ. A footnote in the RSV for Matthew 1.16 says, Other ancient authorities read, Joseph, to whom was betrothed the Virgin Mary, was the father of Jesus, who was called Christ. The footnote did not appear in the New Testament issue in 1946. Neither does it appear in the cheap paper-bound issues. It is only found in the better-bound issues since 1952. 
there are only a few of the changes and these are only a few of the changes and omissions graham promotes rsv so how does billy graham feel about the revised standard version produced to by many pro-communist theologians Quote, in 1952, Billy Graham accepted a copy of the modernistic revised standard version and told a crowd of 20,000 people. These scholars have probably given us the most nearly perfect translation in English. While there may be room for disagreement in certain areas of the translation, yet this new version should supplement the King James Version and make Bible reading a habit throughout America. Unquote. Let's return to the Amity Press, UBS, and ABS and their Bible printing. Since many in leadership roles in the UBS and the ABS do not believe in an inerrant word of God, do you want your money going to such organizations in order for them to print Bibles? Are these corrupt Bibles the ones being printed at Amity Printing Press? In addition to the communists using the Bible as bait, could the term poison snake also refer to corrupt versions of God's word? Remember, the Amity Press was organized with the help of the United Bible Society in the United States when Dr. Oswald Hoffman, well-known Lutheran Hour speaker, was president of the UBS. Funding for the Amity Press from the USA was directed through the American Bible Society. The UBS is the group that controls all the Bible societies in the world. Oh, by the way, Billy Graham wrote a foreword to the Hoffman's book, Hoffman is also on the board of Directors of Christianity Today, a magazine started by Billy Graham. It's a small world, isn't it? Universalism. Let's see. Now, do you recall that I've just mentioned that the ABS affiliated with the UBS, which was headed by Hoffman, who helped to organize the Amity Press, holds the copyright to today's English version, TEV, of the Bible. Graham has distributed thousands of copies of the TEV through his crusades. This is the Bible that denies the blood atonement of Christ in 16 places. In fact, the wording of several of these verses gives the impression that because Christ died, all are saved. For example, Ephesians 1, 7 in the TV, TEV says, For by the death of Christ we are set free, and our sins are forgiven. However, the King James Version explains that it is through Christ's blood that we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. Without accepting his atonement for us, we cannot be saved. There is a condition to having our sins forgiven. We are not automatically forgiven just because Christ died. We must accept his provision for us. Returning to the Amity, Amity Press, I ask, isn't it strange that the communist government would not allow any Bibles to be distributed in China, yet they will allow legal Bibles to be printed by Amity Press? Obviously, there is a catch somewhere. Furthermore, in November 1999, a contract was signed with Ding Fusun, the vice chairman of the Three Self-Patriotic Movement, who is also president of the uh, Jiajing Christian Council for the publishing and distri distribution of Billy Graham's sermons. By the end of 2000, Ned Graham was hoping that Billy's book, Just As I Am, already in translating stage, would be available to the Chinese. Ned and Billy Graham are not the only Grahams working in China with the communist government. Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's son, has also connections with them. In his January 2000 Samaritan's Purse newsletter, he mentioned that there was a major breakthrough in China. He notes, quote, a Korean, Ben Her Lee, has obtained official permission from the Chinese government to open a Christian school for children. Lee was saved in a Billy Graham crusade in Seoul, South Korea. In 1973, he has committed his life to spreading the gospel. The International Academy opened in the capital city of Beijing this fall. My mother, whose parents were missionaries in China, had a missionary school in North Korea. Now Christian professionals can send their children to a government-sanctioned Christian school in the heart of China, unquote. Franklin adds, quote, Dr. Ben-Hur Lee, president of the International Academy of Beijing, and Elmer Kilborn, our Samaritan Purse representation, representation to China, worked to establish the government-sanctioned school. 
missionaries are the enemy. The mercenaries. Missionaries. No, missionaries are the enemy. A Christian school in China would be wonderful, and we should thank the Lord for it, if it were true. But, once again, we need to take notice that the school is government-sanctioned. I think it is also interesting to note that the person who was able to receive permission for the school just happened to have been saved at a Billy Graham crusade and is now president of the school. What a coincidence. Note also that just recently the president of China, who is the head of the Communist Party, said, quote, Our enemy is not those with guns, but missionaries with Bibles, unquote. Do you honestly think that such a person would grant permission for a Christian school? Of course, the Grams repay the communists for, for such privileges. Quote, according to the Watch Chicago Tribune, April 6, 1970, Graham said that he also refused to discuss communism. For years, I have not spoken about that, he said. I cannot go around the world and say who is right and who is not right. J. Edgar Hoover once warned if a minister can be influenced to keep silent about the dangers of communism, the party has gained. Not only have Ned and Billy Graham catered to these communists by giving them a tour of their facilities, etc., but the Grahams promoted the PNTR, formerly known as the Most Favored Nation, or MFN. And Ned has even testified before the Senate Finance Committee concerning the U.S. granting China permanent normal trade relations, PNTR. Probably due, at least in part, to Graham's speech, this bill passed the House on May 24, 2000. On a 237 to 197 vote, the House voted to grant permanent normal trade relations to Beijing and to end 20 years of turbulent annual revenues. That was 19 more than the 218 votes needed for passage, a far more comfortable margin than either side had predicted. Clinton appeared in the Rose Garden moments later to applaud the action. One author remarks, quote, Increased American trade with China through the granting of permanent normal trade relations or the ascension of China to the WTO, World Trade Organization, will simply further Jiang Zimenin's goal of perfecting socialism in China. Do we as a nation really want to have a hand in helping the Chinese communists achieve this goal? Previous attempts to perfect socialism in China have resulted in genocide on a scale never previously seen, unquote. In 1999, the Chinese pr premier, Zhu Ranji, a communist, toward the U.S. and the White House, had a state dinner honoring him. Billy and Ruth Graham were among the guests who attended. Graham said, I think he, Zhu, has turned China around. <laughs> yeah. By the way, he was also a speaker at one of the Council on Foreign Relations meeting in 1990 and was invited as a participant in Gorbachev State of the World Forum, that is Zayu Rajin. Yeah. Dr. Stanley Monteth says Gorbachev State of the World Forum meetings always have an underlying theme of occultism. Of course, the Grams already knew Rajin since they met had met him in China in 1988 and... 1994. Graham's support MFN for China. Ned and Billy Graham had been strong proponents for granting China most favored nation, MFN, status for already. Remember that China is a nation which practices emphasize and persecutes Christians. A few years ago, when legislators were hesitant to grant China MFN status, Billy Graham wrote a letter to them in support of the bill. Many legislators who were on the fence voted in favor of the bill after receiving this letter. Also, when Li Ping, the butcher of Tiananmen Square, passed two laws against Christians, Dr. Graham sent out a letter of support for him. The two laws, in violation of the religious freedoms of the Chinese Constitution, made it a crime for foreigners to give out Bibles or do missionary work in China and for China's 100 million house church Christians to hold their secret house church worship services. Since then, things in China have deteriorated even more, according to one U.S. State Department official who said it hasn't been this bad since the early 90s, just after Tiananmen. 
Yet, Ned Graham states that he knows of no persecution in China, and after Billy's trip to China, he stated that China is open, and he also failed to see the persecution of the Christians. Ned Graham just returned from China in mid-2000, and he said, China has changed and is continuing to change at a rapid pace. The main problem now faced by the church is no longer general persecution mandated by the government, as many would think. In Ned's May 1999 letter, he brags, quote, East Gates has also had the privilege of working at the highest levels in China to educate Chinese leaders as to the benefits of its growing Christian population. Because of East Gates' positive engagements with China's leadership, several religious policies have been changed, clarified, and published, creating improved conditions for China's Christian population. We continue to work with governmental authorities towards improvement in these challenging arenas. Persecution continues. The Grams must have missed a news report in November 1998 where over 140 Protestants were arrested and their leaders beaten. This was one, this was just one month after China signed a United Nations treaty protecting religious freedom of religion, I'm sorry. Between February and June 1996, in just the Dying province alone, it is reported that police have destroyed at least 15,000 unregistered temples, churches, and tombs. Quote, Chinese newspapers have reported a crackdown on unauthorized worship in the coastal city of Wenzhou, an area isolated from government control. Over 1,000 temples, churches, and ancestral halls in the area have been shut down since November 2000, and many were demolished. The heavy-handed actions come less than a month after China agreed to resume human rights talks with the U.S., unquote. Dr. Noah Hutchings has taken Bibles and other Christian literature into China throughout the years. In 1996, he was arrested again for doing so. He wrote, on January 14, 1996, the Communist Central Committee criminalized all Christian activity outside the Three Self Church. I could not place a direct call to a church or visit a church without a government permit. In 1997, the Chinese police were circulating an arrest warrant that bears the names of 3,000 evangelical preachers. On December 27, 1999, five more house church leaders were arrested in Henan, Providence. One house church leader reports, the last six months have been the toughest in years for house churches. We have experienced vastly increased surveillance and interference. On August 23rd, year 2000, and ever 130 Christians were arrested in Henan province. On September 4th, 2000, a 19-year-old was arrested and beaten so badly that he died. Back in May 2000, 13 house churches were also arrested. Church members were also arrested. Around the same time, many churches were closed down in the Guangdong province, and at least 10 leaders of underground groups were arrested. One official said unregistered or illegal groups may be punished, according to the relevant regulations. Soon after Billy's visit to China, the following story appeared in the evangelical press about the crackdown on China's independent churches. Quote, at a time, many faucets of Chinese society are experiencing greater freedom. Members of house churches across China are facing the worst repression since the end of the Cultural Revolution. For about a year, reports of increased arrests and harassments have filtered out of China. In the last six months, such reports have snowballed. China watchers are alarmed by the recent pro proliferation of regulations on Christian activities. Action against Christians have been especially harsh in Anhu and Hinnan provinces where the church has grown fastest. One minute, I gotta take a drink. <coughs> okay, sorry about that. According to the U.S. State Department's 2000 report on religious persecution, the Chinese Christians face harassment, extortion, prolonged detention, physical abuse, and incarceration in prison or in re-education through labor camps. More arrests. In 1999, there was a report which stated, quote, eight house church leaders are still being detained among the 31 Christians that were arrested in August. 
The eight are currently being held by the Public Security Bureau in Nanyang, Henan Province. The government has recently carried out a number of executions as part of the campaign to control any form of dissidents. Wow. <clears throat> Among the eight house church leaders presently detained, two of them are signers of the Confession of Faith that was signed in November 1998. The confession included a statement that appealed to the government to recognize the house churches and to cease persecuting them. With numerous reports of persecution hidden in some newspapers, Ned has finally admitted that some persecution may exist, but he also quickly explains that the reason this may be so is because believers do not interpret scripture correctly, act upon erroneous teachings from outsiders, or do not use wisdom in expressing their faith. This only invites scrutiny and misunderstanding of the Christian faith and its followers, unquote. However, if China has religious freedom, as the Grams tried to make us believe, then it really doesn't matter to the government, that is, if the people, if the group, interprets scripture correctly or not. Besides, how would a communistic, anti-God, atheistic government know how to interpret scripture correctly? This is just another ploy for the Grams to side with the communistic Chinese government while at the same time trying to satisfy their readers' inquiries about the persecution and keep the funds coming in to their ministries. Billy Graham of China. There's an interesting story about an arrest that took place in 1988 while Billy Graham was in China. The report states, quote, a prominent house church leader from Henan province was arrested in Beijing two weeks ago by China's Ministry of State Security. The man, oh, XU is his first name, and then Y. O-N-G-Z-E, he was 48, had gone to the Capitol hoping to meet with visiting American evangelist Billy Graham on April 17th. However, according to a traveler who came out from China last week, Xu was arrested around 4 p.m. on April 16th in the Yutan Altar of the Moon Park in Beijing. Zhu is a leader of a house church group in central China, which has established over 3,000 churches since 1980. He and several of his co-workers went to Beijing on April 13th at the invitation of a fellow house church pastor in order to hear Billy Graham preach on, April, on Sunday, April 17th. Word had been circulated that Dr. Billy Graham would also meet with house church pastors and have communion with them in certain believers' homes on that day. On April 15th, Zhu stayed at home of a relative who lives in a residence owned by a particular government agency. The following day, Zhu and two of his cousins went for a stroll in nearby Yutan Park. While the two cousins went into a pavilion, Zhu remained outside alone. This is when he was arrested. Many evangelists with Yu, Zhu, group and other groups doing similar work have been arrested or detained over recent years. Over 80 evangelists are reported to be in detention at present in just one area in Shani province. Most day detainees, many of whom are young rural evangelists in their late teens or early 20s are inter interrogated, sometimes with physical abuse, kept in detention for several weeks, however, I mean, kept in detention for several weeks and then released. Key leaders are treated more seriously, however. In one area of Anu province, the local public security bureau offered a reward of 4,000 yun, around U.S. $1,000, for information leading to the arrest of two female evangelists. This is not all of the story, however, you see. Zhu had written a letter to a friend in Beijing telling him of his intention to see Billy Graham. It appears that this letter was intercepted by the authorities, resulting in his arrest. According to his co-workers who spoke after the arrest of the bearer of this report, Zhu had intended to tell Billy Graham about the pneumonia of church growth. The phenomena, not pneumonia, I'm so sorry. The phenomena of church growth, revival, and persecution in rural China. In 
the nature and impact of his work, Zhu can rightly be called the Billy Graham of China, so it is ironic that he was arrested on the eve of his meeting with Graham. Perhaps, as was suggested, the authorities did intercept the letter, or could it be that letter reached Graham and he turned it in to the authorities, as he previously had done when he gave the Russian KJB a list of names of persecuted Christians, which will be covered shortly. Whew, I tell you what. More recent news from Hinnan Province has revealed that several associates of Zhu were arrested there two days after his detention in Beijing. Several of their church meeting points were raided and closed down. Indications are, therefore, that the arrest of Zhu was part of a planned and coordinated operation. In 1997, Zhu was again sentenced to 10 years in prison for illegal activities, which included refusing to have his church registered. During this imprisonment, he was beaten hundreds of times and often tortured after interrogation sessions. Zhu reported that once both arms were handcuffed to different iron gates, when the gates were open, he was stretched off the ground in a crucifixion position. Han Winslow claims that Zhu is basically not a Christian since his views were heretical. You see, Zhu was preaching the world would soon end, which is heresy to the communists. But does it really matter what Zhu teaches if there is a religious freedom as claimed by the Grams, Ting, and Winslow? Graham betrays persecuted Christians. A similar incident occurred in Russia. During his visit there, persecuted Christians gave Graham on written notes their names and pleas addressed to Graham to help them get the message out to the world of their persecution and dreadful agony. Instead of taking pity on tortured Christians, Graham turned those handwritten, scribbled, pitiful, smuggled notes to the KGB. Do you realize what you've just read? Graham betrayed the confidence of those persecuted Christians and turned their notes over to the communistic KGB. Persecuted Christians who thought they would find a friend in Billy Graham were sadly mistaken. After all, the Grahams don't really think or admit that there is persecution taking place there. In a book entitled A Prophet with Honor, The Billy Graham Story, which Graham asked William Martin to write, we are told that if Graham were to visit Russia, Quote, it would be imperative for him to visit the six Siberian Pentecostals who, claiming to be victims of religious persecution, had sought asylum in the U.S. Embassy in 1978 and had been living in its basement ever since. The Siberian six, seven, before one of their members went on a hunger strike and had to be removed to a hospital, had become a vexing source of tension between the Soviet and U.S. governments and had a cause and a cause celebrity for champions of religious freedoms around the world. Soviet authorities persistently claimed the Pentecostals were not sincere religionists persecuted for their faith, but opportunists using religion as a means to force the government to allow them to leave the country, as they had been trying to do for over 20 years. Several Graham associates eventually came to, this, came to share this view. Dr. Alexander Herazeti, Billy Graham's point man, quote, explained that if Graham returned to America and said the Soviet government had not allowed him to see the Siberians, it would reflect badly on the government and on the peace conference. If he said he had freely chosen not to see them, he would suffer an enormous loss of respect in America, either because he lacked compassion or commitment to religious freedom or because he was lying, and if he said the Pentecostals had not wanted to receive him, Americas would scoff, charging him with swallowing obvious propaganda, uncomfortable as it might be for all concerned. Graham had to see the Siberians, unquote. I'm sure you noticed that Graham only visited the Siberian Six out of pressure and to keep from losing the Americans' respect for him, but not out of concern for the people. However, he did nothing to help them and only sided with the Russian government in claiming that they were not being persecuted for their religious faith. In fact, during his visit to Moscow, Billy Graham made this amazing statement, I have seen no signs of oppression of the believers in the Soviet Union, unquote. Concerning the Siberian Six, he said, one of the Soviet officials I spoke with did indicate that he thought the problem would be resolved in due time, but they viewed the Pentecostals as lawbreakers, not as refugees, he said. This is 
the normal communist line, whether in Russia or China. Any Christians in jail are there because they have broken the law, but it just so happens that to be a Christian and witness to someone else is against the law. When asked about the Christians in China who have been jailed by the communists, Ting's usual answer is that they have broken the laws. He tries to make the faithful Christians appear as common criminals, whereas their only crime is their decision to obey Christ rather than communism. Yes, those Christians under communism who are in prison have indeed broken the laws. But what laws? They have broken communist laws, which forbid public preaching of the gospel. They have broken communist laws, which forbid the religious training of the children. They have broken communist laws, whereby the local church is put under the authority of the state rather than allowed to have the freedom to exercise its ministry under its one and only head, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, many Christians in communist lands have broken such laws and been severely persecuted for it. A leading Hong Kong newspaper quoted Bishop Ting as saying, quote, If there are Christians in jail in China, it is not because of their faith, but because they are criminals, unquote. Han Winzo said the same thing. Remember, however, that being a house church Christian in China is a crime, so Christians are considered to be criminals. The same thing is true in the Soviet Union. Graham won't criticize Soviet government. While in Russia, Graham commented that he didn't have time to visit the unofficial groups because the Russians had his time scheduled hour by hour. Yet the Chicago Sun-Times revealed, quote, Graham's schedule, however, showed he had no events Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, or all day Thursday, unquote. Was Graham being truthful? Of course, Graham admitted that he refused to criticize the Soviet government in public. He even claimed that there was a measure of freedom in the Soviet Union. He then bragged, quote, As it turns out, the May 1982 trip to Moscow was a, was a signal to other communist-dominated countries that they could now invite us without risk a fr without risking a frown from the Kremlin. During the summer, invitations arrived from the East German Germany and Czechoslovakia, among the most restrictive governments in that part of the world, unquote. It is easy to see that Graham was richly rewarded for keeping quiet about the persecution of Christians in Russia and elsewhere. In Graham's book, Rebel with a Cause, he mentioned that one of his father's trips to Russia, which was orchestrated by the communists, that Billy Graham, quote, thanked Lenin for converting the Orthodox Church by taking its property and stripping it of its power so it turned to God. Franklin said communist officials carefully controlled Daddy's schedule during that trip but never hindered his preaching. Why? Daddy never spoke against communism in his sermons. Interestingly, Billy Graham admitted that he had sought advice of Vatican officials on what they believed to be the most effective approach in dealing with the Soviets during his trip to Moscow. Graham also had a crusade in Moscow in 1991. He remarked, quote, Things are more open now in the Soviet Union than ever before. People are able to take the gospel and distribute Bibles in schools, prisons, even the military, unquote. Graham receives honorary degree. On January 6, 1981, Graham received an honorary degree from the Christian Theological Academy in Warsaw, Poland. At this time, Mr. Tazu Dusik, Deputy Director of the State Office of Religion Affair, Religious Affairs, a communist, said, This distinction is a symbol of our great respect and warmth for you. David Cloud writes, quote, Though there is some semblance of freedom of worship, the communist government of Poland seeks to control all religious activity. For example, in 1984, official ruling forbids the display of crosses in any public buildings. The Polish government strictly controls the printing of all Christian literature and allows only one evangelical Christian book to be printed every year. When the Polish workers attempted in 1981 to form a simple labor union independent from the government sanctioned and control ones, the leaders of the movement were imprisoned and the movement was violently crushed by the Polish military. This was the same year that Billy Graham was honored by Polish authorities, the very same authorities who ruled the Polish people with an iron fist, unquote. Graham had also bragged up the religious freedom he saw in 1977 in Hungary, in another communist country. In 1981, Graham again went to Hungary to receive another honorary degree from a communist-controlled seminary. Imern Miklos, Secretary of State for Church Affairs, Communist Party, and Bishop Bartha Ab 
he's an apostate red puppet, World Council Church leaders, co-hosted his visit and praised him warmly. Grant himself wrote that Milklos had been extremely helpful to us during our 1977 visit and was again his co-host for his honorary degree. He added, quote, A formal academic ceremony steeped in centuries-old tradition, Bishop Bartha conferred the decree on me, degree on me. The event was in the Academy's main auditorium with the faculty in full academic, academic regular as was i the audience included not only students and pastors but also a number of communist officials the american ambassador had driven from budapest for the ceremony unquote quote again several times during the 80s graham made trips to speak in various communist countries again he accommodated the atheistic governments and the religious powers of these lands the charlotte observer reported in its january 19th 1989 issue that Graham's BKG trip was July this July to Budapest is co-sponsored co-sponsored by the communist government and the Roman Catholic Church unquote Graham arranges trip recently three prominent American clergymen were touring China by agreement of President Clinton and Chinese leader Jiang Zemin Mr. Sizik was accompanied, who accompanied the group, believes the Graham arranged trip was deliberate, if less prom, prom, promoted counterpart. Counterpoint. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Quote, the trip included public pronouncements by Mr. Yi of the Religious Affairs Bureau, which oversees government-sanctioned religious activities. At press conferences in New York and Washington, Mr. Yi told journalists that reports of religious persecution in China may be a case of general ignorance. Mr. Yi defended the imprisonment of some Chinese Christians. I can tell you in all serious, seriousness, they are in prison not because of their religious beliefs, but because they broke the law in China, meaning for worship without government permission is illegal. The delegates met with 17 members of Congress, according to China's Zenhu News Agency, some of whom had voted against President Clinton's decision to extend China's most favored nation trade status, while others had criticized religious freedom in China. The news agency said the delegation has provided a very good opportunity for people of various circles of the United States to fully, correctly, and objectively understand the religious situation in China. This past June 1999, during congressional debate over China's trade status, Mr. Graham spoke at a policy forum in Washington sponsored by the Cato Institute. He offered prepared remarks as part of the three-man panel toting the benefit of expanding commercial ties with China. Then he was asked to talk about the situation of Christians in China. Mr. Graham responded by stating that intellectuals have been persecuted more than religious practitioners in China. He said there are still instances of individuals encouraged to be abort, aborted or forced to be aborted, but not as prevalently as some people would have you believe. He concluded, I have not in my experience encountered individuals who have recently been in, detained or interrogated or persecuted simply for their faith structure of beliefs. Cato's Dan Griswold, organizer of the forum, said Mr. Graham almost left the impression that believers are as free in China as they are here. Weed out extremists. In Ned's November 2000 letter, he again downplays the persecution. Let's look at several sentences in the letter along with a few comments. He writes, our East Gate team continues to work hard to serve the indigenous Christians across China. As you know, East Gates works with all Christian groups as long as their focus is on the fundamentals of evangelical Christianity. That sounds fairly good, does it not? However, the very next sentence says, we generally do not work with the extreme fundamentalists, Pentecostals, or liberal groups because of their divisive and separatist activities. Excuse me, but don't the extreme fundamentalists believe in the fundamentals of evangelical Christianity? Ned continues, the vast majority of Christians in China are evangelical and their focus is on serving God, each other, and evangelism. The fringe groups, however, tend to get a lot of attention from 
of some overseas ministries that report their activities for fundraising purposes. Because these fringe groups frequently violate Chinese law, it is reported that they are persecuted, when in fact the Chinese authorities are oftentimes doing their best to weed out the extremists while protecting legitimate religious activities. Most people read over these few sentences without analyzing what Graham has just said. He is using doublespeak and justifying the Chinese government's persecution. Notice that he said that the vast majority of Chinese Christians are involved in evangelism. Of course, this is an illegal activity in China, yet he refers to the fringe groups that violate Chinese law. If this, if his statement is true, and there's no reason to doubt it, then this makes the vast majority of Chinese uh, Christians criminals, not just the fringe <clears throat> groups. Of course, by saying that there are fringe groups and extremists, which the Chinese government is trying to weed out, he sides with the communist government in their persecution of Christians. Notice that Ned says that some people are reporting that Christians are persecuted, when in fact he thinks the government is doing their best to weed out the extremists. He continues that communist government is protecting legitimate religious activities. This just is not true. And remember, evangelism is not a legitimate religion religious activity. Contradictions like this are necessary for Graham to be able to cater to the communists while at the same time receive, hold on, at the same time trying to convince American Christians to continue sending their money to him. If only people would stop and think about what is being said instead of just quickly glancing over the surface, they would not be so quick to support Ned Graham's ministry. Yes, Billy and Ned Graham want China to have the permanent normal trade relations PNTR. After all, Ned admits that the PNTR trading system will help his East Gates ministry. He adds, my concern is that if the U.S. does not grant China PNTR before China's ascension into WTO, China will retaliate by restricting U.S. access to China's markets. If this were to happen, it could harm our work, especially in the area of publishing. Billy and Ruth defend Ned. At this point, Ned needs to worry about... Hold on one minute. I gotta look at something. Oh, that's not what I wanted to look at. I'm so sorry. Okay. I just had to look and see where we were at at time. Okay. <clears throat> At this point, Ned needs to worry about his work being harmed, not from not granting PNTR status to China. His own personal life is in total disarray. His wife, quote, Carol, Carol Graham, in a November 10th, 1998 affidavit filed in court, accused her husband of infidelity, domestic violence, and drug and alcohol abuse. Ned and Carol Graham were then members of Grace Community Church in Auburn, Washington, where Mr. Graham had been an elder and associate pastor. Church elders met with him for two hours in mid-December 1998. They discussed not only the accusations in the divorce complaint, but also Mr. Graham's rare church attendance during the preceding three years according to Bruce Kerr, chairman of the church's elder board. The church subsequently stopped supporting East Gates at a $500 a month, revoked Mr. Graham's minstrel license, and told him to stop using the title reverend since he had never been ordained. Ned Graham claimed in September 1999, I never personally used the title Reverend and East Gates no longer uses the title Reverend in reference to me. But a 1997 letter he wrote to members of Congress is signed Reverend Ned Graham. The East Gates website, at least until mid-November, included a photograph of Mr. Graham holding a Bible with a photo captioned Reverend Ned Graham. The site has since been changed. President replaced Reverend this is just one of the lies that Ned's been caught in. When World asked about his treatment for an alcohol-related condition, Graham would only reply that he took board-approved time away in June 1998, but he didn't deny being treated for it. In response to a question about alleged involvement with a woman who was not his wife, Mr. Graham wrote, During our marriage and before the divorce, I had never been alone in a woman's home or apartment and had never been alone in my home with any woman other than my wife. What about being alone in a hotel with another woman? Also, what about since the divorce? To directly answer your implied question, I was faithful to my wife for 18 years without exception. At the time of the divorce filing, Ned and Carol Graham had been married for 19 years and two and a half months. They have two sons, ages 11 and 13. 
world gave Mr. Graham an opportunity to amend his answer. An aide replied by email, please very carefully note that Mr. Graham's answer is more factually correct. If his answer is factually correct, then he lied about being faithful to his wife in the last year of their marriage. At least six of the 10 member Eastgate staff resigned in the first six months of this year, 1999. Three of the five members of the Eastgate Board of Directors resigned at a December 1, 1998 telephone conference call board meeting. Three new board members came on at the meeting. Mrs. Graham's sister, Ruth Graham McIntyre, his brother-in-law, Stefan, I can't pronounce that name, and his motivational speaker, Peter Lowe. Mr. Graham informed the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability in a January 8, 1999 letter that Eastgate's was voluntary withdrawing its membership since it had fallen out of compliance with ECFA standards that family members should not constitute a majority of a board. Eastgate's bylaws require all members and employees to be in a pattern of personal and corporate accountability. They are expected to put into their family life the time needed for the well-being of the family unit. Mr. Gordon cited fraternization with a woman employee as another of Mr. Graham's bylaw violations. Additionally, his wife said that Ned has used pornographic materials. Right after these accusations, Billy and Ruth Graham wrote a letter in defense of Ned and had it published in Christianity Today. They said, quote, Ned has our full and complete confidence and support. We are very proud of Ned and the honesty and integrity he has demonstrated in dealing with these difficult issues. We respect Ned for continuing to be faithful to God's call in his life to serve the growing church in China. We also continue to fully support the ministry of East Gates and its various projects in China, unquote. It is natural to come to a family member's defense, but we must be honest when we do so. To claim that Ned has been honest in dealing with these issues just is not true. As an extra note, Ned also practiced karate and other martial arts, at least as a young person. In Billy Graham's book, Unto the Hills, he mentioned that Ned had much practice in the martial arts. For those we may not for those we may not be aware of it, I'll just briefly point out that the martial arts come right out of Buddhism. Karate, which is a generic term that encompasses all kinds of styles that utilize different hand and foot blows, was handed down by Zen master to a Buddhist monk by word of mouth. Everything that is done in karate can be traced back to some principle of Zen Buddhism. Zen Buddhism is a pagan religion which believes incarnation, no hell, meditation, yoga, special breathing exercises taken from yoga, and many other ideas that are foreign and contradictory to biblical teaching. And I am going to end that there. Oh, brothers and sisters, there's so much. I mean, I, I, I read it. And like I said, you know, I'm doing this in real time with you. I have not pre-read this book. I'm reading it out there. And so I'm reading it as you're hearing it for the first time. And wow, wow, wow. And there's times that I do get very passionate. There's times that I get kind of angry inside. I admit it because for so many years, I mean, I lived with my grandma, whether when I was young in order to take care of her. And I remember my uncle Charlie would call and say, Hey, Billy Graham's on. And I'd be like, Oh man, you know, who wanted to listen to that? And it's not because I knew it was false. It was because I didn't want to listen to it, you know, because I was just a kid. But my grandmother, she really, she really, you know, looked up to this man. And now that I'm finding this man was nothing but a wolf in sheep's clothing. He was an apostate. He was wicked. I mean, I, I have no other other words to say that is what the man was now I do not know what happened prior to him excelling his last breath from his lungs I do not know only God knows and I will leave that there but I do pray that he did repent for all of the treachery that he caused in the body of Christ because he did all right brothers and sisters keep your eyes on Jesus your nose in the book, which is the word of God and embed the word of God upon the tablets of your hearts. So you will not sin against God or be deceived. Get in the word, know the word, stand on the word. You know, if you don't know the word, someone can come along and just, you know, say the slightest subtle change and you're going to believe it. You've got to know the word. You got to know the word. Be firm. Be, know the word. 
Get the whole armor of God on. Get the whole armor of God on. Oh, boy. I love you all so very much. Be safe, brothers and sisters. Be safe.